The Celtics Talk Podcast is presented by 24autogroup.com, 11 locations across New England. What's up, everybody? Welcome into the off-day edition of the Celtics Talk Podcast, a rare two-day break. Feels like Celtics just had a big, long all-star break. Wow, we have two days off, but uh, looking ahead to March, there is not a lot of breaks in the calendar, so we'll we'll take it. We'll take this opportunity to downshift. Uh, earlier this week, I got a chance to catch up with Xavier Tillman, talk about adjusting to the new Celtics organization and uh, being patient with waiting for his opportunity to get out there and show what he can do on the court. Right before that, Abby got a chance to sit down with Drew Holiday and talk about defense and Derek White and a bunch of fun stuff. So we're bringing you both those interviews today as part of the pod. Also, we'll get into a little newsy stuff. Drew Holiday's in the headlines today for uh, reportedly being invited to join the U.S. national team when uh, they get ready for Harris over the summer and be part of of that group, a a select group of 12 players. Uh, But Drew has the history of winning gold with that group, and uh, I know that they've wanted him there for a while. So let's get right into our chats. Uh, Let's start with my talk with Xavier Tillman. All right, Xavier, I got a bunch of off-the-court stuff, but I want to start on the court. I I noticed you working on the three-point shot after practice. It feels like every big man in the league eventually has to gravitate out there. Like, how much of a focus is that for you? Do you see yourself? I, I think about Al, not a big three-point shooter when he first came into the league. Can you see it growing as part of your game? Absolutely. I mean, that's just the way the league is trending. Um, this past summer, I spent a lot of time on my threes. I mean, I was getting up thousands and thousands of shots, uh, especially from three movement threes, stationary threes, you know, this summer. So. Uh, that's that's where the league is trending. So unless you're a big who can just jump over the rim easy, <laughs> you need to be able to shoot the three ball. So tell me about it. You know, most guys get traded midseason. It's like you're scrambling to get here, get thrown into it. You were able to kind of absorb a little bit. What did you learn during that process, and what did you take away from getting to watch it first? Yeah, I kind of started to learn the culture, started to learn the guys and how they like to operate, what they're most comfortable doing. Um, I learned how our offense likes to flow and, and what – how we like to get into our actions and the players we like to go through. Um, defensively, I'm learning a lot of you know key concepts that the coaching staff has and and how we like to guard and stuff like that. Um, yeah, it was a this first couple of weeks here has been really good for me to just be able to learn and, and kind of sit back and understand you know what we're trying to do, what it takes to do what we're trying to do, um, and how to do it each and every day. Are there guys that are Pulled you aside, grabbed you, said like, "Let me help you. Let me let, let me put you on the right path here." What's that? What's that been like? I mean, everybody's been great. They're, yeah, everybody's been great. You know, from Peyton to you know Luke to you know Al. You know, everybody's been great. Tell me what that's like, Al in particular. I was talking to Brad Stevens right after the trade deadline. I said defensively, you guys are very similar to me, right? Like below the rim guys, but like the way you can defend, the versatility. How much can you learn from being around Al, and especially? watching what he does now at, 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 at his age? Uh, the, the thing that I personally selfishly want to learn from Al is longevity, what it takes to be in this league that long. Um, you know, a big thing that he always talks about is uh, being in the weight room and, and keeping and making sure that you're also eating the right foods and that way you're not putting extra weight on your joints and your knees and stuff like that. But just learning from him, you know, I want to play for a long time as well. So um, that's me selfishly. And then on the court for us right now, a big thing that Al – has shown me is just being able to use my voice, you know, like, especially it's like if you know what you're doing out there, you know, it, it'd be great for you to help the guys, you know, see what you're seeing. So, um, did that come naturally cool. for you? Are you normally a vocal guy? Oh, I'm normally a vocal yeah. guy for sure. Okay, so tell me the, the personal side of it. You're traded mid season, you've got a family, three kids? Three kids, yeah. What's that like? Like, how, like, I mean, you gotta tell your kids, all right, we're, we're going up to Boston? Like, how does that work? Yeah, it was crazy. It was crazy for sure. Um, I had um, planned my wife's birthday on trade deadline. Um, we had a birthday. Her, her day was the day we got traded, the day before. Um, and we had a whole birthday <laughs> we had a whole birthday thing planned out. We were still able to do it, but it was like, man, like, this is crazy. And the kids, um, you know, they're adjusting. They finally got here yesterday, so I'm excited. Um, now it's just trying to get them comfortable with the people and, and, and getting them comfortable with school and um, getting comfortable with their routines and stuff like that. So they're um, all settled in. Got my dog here, too, so that's oh, good. Oh, man. What kind of dog you got? Uh, English Bulldog. Okay. 
So what was that like? I mean, that's got to be jarring too. I, 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 looking at your Instagram, it's all your family. Like, how, what was it like having to be away from them and as you're adjusting? It was awful. Oh. It was awful. Cause I'm like I, like you said, I'm a real family man. And, and and what I mean by that is like I I call them every day, maybe three times a day. So just to check in on them. So for me. You know, not just being there with them, like I could see that my son was feeling it and, and, and my daughters were feeling it and my wife was feeling it like, dang, like it's just hard not to be together. And uh, it was hard for me to like fully be present here because I was just thinking about them and how they're doing. So now that they're here, it feels really good now that I know, OK, that they're good. Now it's just about getting them adjusted and, like I said, finding their routines and their rhythm and the and the people that they want to hang around and stuff. Do your kids know? the opportunity here with how good this team is and championship all that or? absolutely not my kids are seven four and, and almost two they, okay. uh, they just know daddy plays basketball that's <laughs> it they don't know about the championship or nothing like that uh, do, they, do you get them some celtic swag like, yeah, 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 yeah 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 my daughter as soon as uh they start printing the 26 jersey mm -hmm. um my oldest daughter started rocking the 26 jersey for sure tell me about picking a jersey number because it's difficult here very. How did you pick it and any significance with that? Uh, uh, very, very difficult first and foremost. And I got the list. I was like, ew, <laughs> these numbers, the, the, the available numbers are not basketball numbers. Um, but my, my dad's birthday is March 26th. So it, it makes her, him and then uh, my grandma's birthday is also on the 26th as well. So, it, I mean, it, 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 again, it's hard to find numbers that line up with, people, with things that are significant to people. So at least you got there. Almost a coincidence, but yeah. <laughs> Uh, everyone who has the first name that starts with the letter X is invariably called X Man or whatever. Do you have another, any other nicknames or any like what, what do X, we call you? X. It really is X. That's yeah. it. Yeah. Now, and your Twitter handle is or uh, an Instagram handle is Rookie Dunker. Uh, Twitter Rookie Dunker. Yeah. What, where did that come from? Me and my boy. Um, his name is Christian Rodriguez. Uh, he was my point guard from like fifth grade up until tenth grade. So when Twitter came out about eighth, ninth, not. When we got on Twitter, at least mm -hmm. around eighth, ninth grade, his was a cis king, and I had just started dunking, so mine, <laughs> mine was rookie dunker. So people are like, yo, you know, you can change that. I'm like, it's just me now. That's that's I, my story. I'm like, I'm not changing it. It threw me for a loop. I said, like, I mean, now you could be experienced dunker. Right, you know, right. You know? Moderate dunker, <laughs> day to day dunker. Nah. Lead me through some of these tattoos. I heard you had redemption. Oh and yeah, yeah. What, so what this you got? is my newest tattoo. Uh, I'm gonna do my own thing. This is from the newest um, Spider-Man uh, movie, okay. Spider-Verse. Um, I love it. Um, since I've been in the NBA, I love cards. Well, I love right. playing cards. So we play cards on the planes. Uh, I got a card tattoo, and I also love spades. Mm -hmm. I also love spades. Uh, I got Ayana on the side, tattooed on my on my interior. Um, I have. Uh, here. <laughs> Make it work. Yeah. Got a line here. Um, well, my family is my Initials. wife. My wife, Tamia. Uh, Ayana Tillman. That's my oldest daughter, Xavier Tillman, my son, and Leilani Tillman. Um, Love yours. J. Cole song that I really, really appreciate because it just helps me stay grounded and helps me just live in the moment and just be grateful for everything that I have versus wanting, you know, future things. Yeah, just, yeah. you know. Um, Where did that appreciation come from? You seem very. Like, an, an, you're very down to earth, it feels like. Uh, You're more grounded than I guess I would say most NBA players. Probably just my family in general. Like, I, I, I honestly understand, like, they are what matters most. Because I feel like whenever I try to be, you know, big-headed and stuff like that in basketball, it always bit me in the butt. <laughs> so it's like, all right, let me just be, you know, to my family and, and put that at the forefront. And All right, let's wrap up with a couple more basketball questions. What was it like going up against... Jason and Jalen and the Celtics before this like what was it like being on the other side um every time we played against them so first of all my whole career I think I played them um, eight times oh, nine wow. times uh never beat them never beat them a couple times at home we got close mm -hmm. never beat them uh what else we would come into the it would always be a big game too yeah. always a big game and, and their fans, Boston fans travel, you know, so in, in Memphis, you know, we'd be half and half. And it didn't make any sense to me how the Boston fans got to Memphis. Um, yeah, they're just a, they're a team that, that was always winning. I feel like ever since they came into the league, like they're always in the playoffs and they're always making a deep run in the playoffs. So um, that was always cool to see from afar. 
And then, you know, once I got here, I, I want to learn, like, what it takes to consistently be there. Like, what are they doing on a day-to-day -day level? And so this has been great. Last thing, I think there's four back-to-backs remaining. They're going to be able to rest guys at points. Like, what do they tell you about staying ready for your opportunity? And, like, how, do you, how can you help them? along the way here? Uh, just being a professional, making sure that I'm showing up on time, you know, working out as hard as I can, making sure I'm eating the right things and, and treating my body right, getting proper rest so that I'm ready for when those opportunities come. Not necessarily the performance base, but giving myself the best uh, chance to be successful when those opportunities come. Um, and it's pretty, um, it's pretty easy for me to do because my whole career has been like in the rotation, out of rotation, in the rotation, out of rotation. So for me, like, it's nothing new. Did you jump into the card games yet since you got there? Uh, yeah. How'd, how'd, how'd it go? It. It's been going good. <laughs> it's been going good. That, you, you, I can just see you taking your new teammates' money. I like oh, that. Oh, yeah. It's been going good. It's been going good. Thank you for your time. Absolutely. All right. Good stuff there from, from Xavier, waiting patiently for his opportunity. You start looking ahead on the schedule, and you see those four back-to-backs. That's at least eight games where you're not going to have Al Horford, uh, or Kristaps Porzingis. You just started thinking with the Celtics up so big in, in the Eastern Conference. There's going to be plenty of opportunities for the Celtics to downshift guys, and I think it's just naturally going to promote opportunity for guys, whether that's Tillman or Luke Cornett, you know, maybe Nemesh Keda. He's still got games left. Uh, so we'll see just what the, what the Celtics end up doing in those instances, but I do think there's going to be chances for those guys to, to show what they can do. I think Tillman's in a tough spot. I keep comparing it a little bit to Mike Muscala last year comes in i think they're high on the player but you know you're kind of getting thrust into a situation that's pretty established that playoff rotation is i would say fairly set now that's not to say that he couldn't make a push to be sort of a, a wild card option in that instance but luke cornett's been really good even nemish kid has been good in those minutes i think it's a longer play here with nemish and uh, with uh with xavier both really uh in terms of what they can be and help this team further down the road so, uh, but I do know that part of the reason they were excited about Xavier was how well he played in the playoffs for Memphis last season, going up against Anthony Davis at times and showing some versatility. So I don't think they'll be afraid of that. He's just gonna gotta win Joe's confidence. He's gotta, you know, develop chemistry with the guys. And that could be tough in the twenty four remaining games that are on the schedule. And uh it's more important probably for him to just be around and start uh, learning these guys in case, you know, there's a bigger role in future seasons. You know, Muscala fell into the same same sort of problem, like player who had been very good in, in small doses uh, outside of Boston, comes here, helps you navigate to the finish line of the season, but just well, didn't have a playoff role. It, it's eager to see if, if Xavier can push that issue a little harder during his time on the floor. Let's talk about Drew Holiday, the news today uh, coming out that uh, is one of the invited to be one of the twelve guys that will uh, comprise Team USA at the Paris Olympics. Uh, he was vital. You remember when the Bucks won a title and then they all jumped on a plane? That would have been 2019, right? Because or or 2020, the year 21, and uh, they they end up flying out right to the Olympics. You know, Tatum a part of that team too, so there's some familiarity there. Uh, this is cool for the Celtics because they're going to have multiple guys like Tatum. And Drew Holiday should, you know, barring something crazy happening here, will be on that team. You still got Derek White and Jalen Brown potentially members as well. And uh, so there was rumors even right after Drew had joined the Celtics, probably back in October, uh, about there being interest from Team USA. And uh, he kind of downplayed it. But um, the mix of playmaking, the mix of defense, and just having been through it and having won gold, uh, I think is really important to that team. And it was clear that Team USA values having him around. The interesting part from a Celtics perspective is that Drew is... So here, let's start with this. Like Drew was extension eligible starting right around April 1st. And so Brad Stevens and his agent will get a chance to sit down and talk about the longer term future. And you don't make a trade like that and give up what you did without being probably ready to go to the bargaining table and pay a pretty hefty some to keep Drew Holiday deep into the future. I think the number is going to surprise some people. Remember that Drew has an option for next season already. I think it's $37.5 million. So even if you're asking him to take a little bit of the discount on that, on the front end, maybe say, okay, get rid of the, that last year, but now sign. I'm going to whisper these numbers, like three years, $90 million, four years, $120 million. Maybe there's some options. 
it's it sounds daunting because thirty million dollars sounds like crazy number. I think salaries are going to be out of control in the NBA, and I mean, look no further than Jalen Brown's going to just sign that what amounts to fifty eight, fifty seven million dollar a year deal. That's just going to be the rate. I mean, eventually there will be a point where you know you'll listen back to this podcast five years from now, and that will be the mid level. And so, um, I think you have to pay for established players and. You know, you also have to, this is dual track, like you got to also sign Derek White at some point, but there's probably room for both. And then you make tougher decisions about what your overall roster looks like further down the road. Now, this gets a lot easier if you win a championship this year, because now you're just in celebration mode and you probably want to keep that entire group together next season. If you don't win a title this year, maybe there's tougher decisions about what players you're going forward with. But I know Drew is positively impacting this team that the guys really like what he brings both defensively and, you know, as someone who is willing to sacrifice his offensive touches and is okay with getting everybody else involved. So I do think maybe one of the bigger storylines because of how big the Celtics are up is going to be what happens with true holiday and do they get that deal done? Does it give him a little bit more security going into the summer where, you know, let's face it, like you, there is injury risk and stuff when you go to the, go to the, uh, go to team USA. Uh, maybe that's alleviated if you're already, work to get that long-term extension in place and uh, gives you the freedom to just focus on playing for your uh, for your national team. I was interested, our friends over at Fanatic Sportsbooks, I was checking their defensive player of the year odds. Now, it's tough. We know around here, guards don't get nearly as much credit as they probably should. So this have, in my mind, two great guard candidates in Derek White and Drew Holiday. Drew right now slotted seventh at plus 15,000. Pretty long odds there. Timmy and actually Chris Stops Porzingis that are uh, behind. Here's the group they're behind. Rudy Gobert, Victor Wembanyama, Bam Adebayo, Chet Holmgren, um, Herb Jones, and Anthony Davis. So, like, okay, I, I you know, I think it's a fair case. I think uh, the Celtics are going to make a push here to finish probably near the top of the league in defensive rating, depending on how they, it, it all plays out over the finish line. I think they got a third this week. Um they definitely, when they want to lock in, are the best defense in the NBA because no one has the ability to, to guard all five spots the way they do. Uh, so maybe that's going to you know further deter the way the same way that Jason Tatum is getting it held against him that there's so much talent on the offensive side in his quest for MVP. You know, maybe everyone looks at it and goes, "Well, Drews doesn't have to play as much of a defensive role because he's got so much talent around him." Uh, I think we know that his versatility and the, his ability to guard star players has has been key for the Celtics this season. So we'll see if he makes any movement. I do think, again, Celtics finish as a top three. If they, if they were to surge and get to the top defense spot, you get, you got to think a little harder. I think the one thing that's certain and uh, is that guys like Drew Holiday and Derek White will probably end up on the all-defense team. But all these guys are going to probably get some votes along the way. So very intrigued to see exactly how that, that voting comes down, who lands on that all-defensive team and... Uh, yeah, Trude's true, going to be on there. Just a matter of where he gets uh, some votes. Will he gets any votes on that Defensive Player of the, of the Year award? So uh, all this Drew Holiday conversation ships perfectly. Abby got a chance to sit down with him on Monday at practice, talk about what it's like to be in that backcourt with Derek White. Uh, we're going to leave you with that interview. You know the drill. Go like, subscribe, check us out on the YouTube page. We're back with you on the post game pod on Friday night. We'll be over at the Garden for the Mavericks and Luca coming to town. Golden State on Sunday. So keep it locked right here on Celtics Talk. And we leave you now with Abby catching up with Drew Holiday. All right, Drew. I pulled you over here to talk about, I'm going to say, it's got to be your favorite spot on the court, the corner there. You know the season you're shooting 63% from the corner? That's what people keep on telling me. Number one in the NBA. It's not bad. key to that? shooting them <laughs> um if you want to be completely honest maybe even look at my shot chart for my career but i don't really during nor like other seasons i don't really take corner threes it's usually no. like above the break and beyond so yeah this, this is, is double this, is this season 11 percent of your shots have come from three this and so this is last year. right and this is new for me for so many corner threes but i guess i'm pretty good at them have you always felt good from the corner? Why didn't you take them earlier in your career? Just because, you know, sometimes as a point guard, like you're doing everything from the top, you're initiating from the top, you kind of rarely get to the corner um, at times, or as much as I do. So, um, 
But yeah, the corner is comfortable, you know. Uh, you get there, especially with guys that you play that I'm playing with. Uh, I get wide open shots, so I, I guess I can't do anything but make them. The crazy thing is, though, it doesn't matter which corner you're in. You hit from basically the same. At the I same guess range. I guess corner is corner. I guess it doesn't matter. To you, has anything changed in your shot? I just think that I'm taking him and shooting him with confidence. I know that obviously shooting, uh, uh, there can be lows in, in shooting, especially during the season. But, again, I get so many good looks from the corner that they're just falling right now. And I understand with this team that's where those shots are coming from. But it's, I mean, arguably the best, the most efficient shot I in mean, basketball right now. Yeah, there's, there's so many weapons on our team that you have to deal with. And I guess them giving up the best, the best shot in, in the game right now, to me, I'm not, I'm not mad at that. Have you found, and we know that you have a bag, but have you found where you can get to your bag with this team in this offense? How much more comfortable are you in that? Yeah, I definitely think I found a balance. Um, yeah. I know a lot of times it's a lot of times about a balance of getting guys open, um, screening, offensive rebounding, but then there are times where I might have a weaker defender on me and I could take advantage of that. If that's in the post, or coming out of the corner, or sometimes in transition. Um, but really just finding that balance and, and attacking. Eight of your top scoring games with the Celtics have come since December 20th. Has there been something that just kind of clicked? Um, I think it's just time, you know? Sometimes when you get time with the with your teammates, with the rotation, um, getting more comfortable in, in your role and what you're supposed to do. Uh, that I mean, just that comfortability sets in, so. I guess since December, I've been feeling more comfortable, and gradually I can keep on doing it. At the other end, how are you feeling about the stock exchange nickname for you and D-White? That's funny. <laughs> That's funny. No, I, I, I like that one. Um, are you into nicknames? Uh, yeah, why not? I mean, they got cookies and cream with mm -hmm. <laughs> JB. And, and I think this might be the first time I have a nickname. But oh. I, think, I think between me and D-White, it, it's a good one. We definitely, uh, I think we feed off each other, especially defensively. Um, the way that he defends sometimes, I'm like, I'm amazed. And I feel like on defense, I, maybe sometimes I've done some crazy stuff, but D. White is amazing on defense. He says the same thing about you. I asked him the other night, are there moments where you two just look at each other and you're like, no, no more. No one is scoring <laughs> I mean, I, again. You know, I got a block last game on, uh, on Jalen Brunson. I look straight at him because that's usually what D. White does. He usually chases somebody, chases somebody down from – from uh, coming over a screen or something like that and blocks a shot. And I did, and I was like, see, I'm turning I'm turning into you, bro. I can do it, too. Yeah. Has he kind of reignited that fire for you? I mean, I know it's always been there, but is it different playing with a guy like him? Yeah, I think that um, I think that he gets me to do different things in terms of, like, again, coming off a screen and trying to block, block a shot from, uh, from right off the screen or chasing somebody down and trying to block it at the rim. Things like that I usually leave to the big. Obviously we have like KP, we have Nimi, um, we have Al, we got Luke. But you know what? I could block shots at the rim too. Maybe I'm a rim protector. I think you are. I know D. White is, damn it. He for sure is. So uh, I, I think those are different challenges that I kind of find in the game and uh, try to continue to do. Has this defense reached its peak? Uh, I don't think so. Um, I think there's a lot more that we can possibly implement. Uh, and maybe you'll see it here soon. I think there's, uh, again, we just have so many different talents and, and the variety of our team is kind of interchangeable. If it's two bigs, if it's we go small, uh, if it's a boxing one or something crazy like that. So it, it would be, yeah, it, it's exciting to play on this team. But you're the guy who's really, I mean, typically in a lot of NBA defenses, it's that back line that's communicating that. But in this defense, that's you. Yeah. How much uh, are you enjoying that? It, it, I've enjoyed it a lot. It's been um, different for me because, again, I'm usually the one guarding the ball. I have to listen to the big or the guys behind me. But uh, at first it was new, and it was weird for me to kind of, like, just be yelling at people and telling them what to do. But now I know why my wife, will, my, why my wife likes it so much. I was going to say, I personally enjoy that no, I mean, so, I, I, yeah. never, I never Embrace knew. Embrace that. I, yeah, I understand why. No, yeah, just <laughs> yelling at people. Uh, finally, before I let you go, what the Benny the Bull ping pong thing? How did that happen? And was that while we were in Chicago? It was in Chicago, yeah. There's a little ping pong table set up, you know, a little mini ping pong table. Uh, I think I'm pretty good at ping pong, but you know, it slipped off the paddle and okay. then hit him in the head. I mean, so. those are small. Those were not accidents. Good. Yeah. 
Yeah, accidental accidents. Did he said it? Did he challenge you? How did that come about? And yeah, it was right before. Um, it was right after like we came out for the announcements or whatever. Like they caught everybody's name. And I don't know why. Like I caught his eye, or maybe he caught mine or something. But he was like, "All right, come on." <laughs> but I think it set the did tone for the you? game. He, he hit. He that. hit it back. Yeah, he hit it back. I don't remember. Okay. I don't remember. So I kind of after I hit him, like I kind of like <laughs> ran off. <laughs> like, I'm done here. Yeah, yeah. But you know, I think I set the tone for the game. So. Yeah. There's a ping pong table first. upstairs, right? Yeah, yeah. Do you play? I, I did more when I when I first got here. Um, one of our trainers and KP, I think they play quite a bit. So. Really? Yeah, Who's a, the best? A, uh, me. And why aren't you playing? I do I do everything. Top, I saw the top spin though everything. in the return. You saw it? I do a little bit of everything. I don't know. Drew, thank you for the Thanks. time. Thanks.